three, two, one, and go. Hey, what's going on guys? Ryan Nelson here. And if you're on the fence between buying the Canon 5D Mark IV or the new EOS R, I'm here to kind of, you know, maybe sway you in one direction or another. So I'm gonna do a quick little comparison between the two to help you decide which one you might wanna buy or which one you should buy or which one you might wanna save your money up for. So let's dive right into it. So right off the bat, these two cameras appear to have pretty much the same specs. They're both 30 megapixels, they're both full frame cameras. Uh, the EOS R is obviously mirrorless and it appears that they both have the same sensor. So theoretically you think the quality of both cameras would be the same. And other similarities, they both shoot 4K 30, they both shoot 1080 60, and they both shoot 120 frames per second in 720, which isn't ideal, but the, I know that the 5D Mark IV holds up very well in 720. We'll see if the EOS R holds up just as well. And both of these cameras shoot in all eye mode, which means you're getting the best quality possible in the video. And they both have touchscreen LCDs. But if you dive a little bit deeper into the specs, they are actually quite different cameras. Now I know a lot of people rag on the EOS R for Canon not putting IBIS, which is in-body image stabilization, in the camera. But they did add a digital image stabilization. Maybe not quite as good, but it is an image stabilizer in the camera, which I'm really glad that they added that feature. On top of that, the EOS R has a swivel LCD, which is fantastic for so many situations. And I don't know why they didn't put that in the Mark IV, but I am glad they put it in the EOS R. Another advantage of the R is it comes with Canon C-Log preloaded onto the camera versus it being a $100 upgrade on the Mark IV. As I mentioned, they both do shoot 4K, but the R only shoots in 3840 by 2160 versus the Mark IV's 4096 by 2160. So you're gonna get a little bit of a wider screen with the Mark IV, which is a true 4K, versus the EOS R, which is just a little under 4K. I don't think that's a huge deal. It's not gonna be a deal breaker for me. If you're a run and gun shooter, startup time might be an issue with you. It's 0.9 seconds on the R and it's 0.1 second on the Mark IV. And I did notice that lag when I was out shooting on run and gun situations, but I didn't think it was enough to deter me from this camera. The electronic viewfinder on the R does take a little bit getting used to, especially if you have your frame rate set down a little bit lower. Now I know that can probably be changed in the menu settings to not do exposure simulation in the viewfinder as well. And that may be just setting it to your preferences. But one thing I did notice in really, really low light, if there's not enough light to get on that sensor without doing a long exposure in say photo mode, you're not gonna get anything in that viewfinder. So that is that is something to keep an eye out for. Now, if shooting the two cards simultaneously is a must for you, then discussion's over by the 5D Mark IV because the EOS R only has one card slot. I've never done dual card shooting. I don't think it's incredibly necessary. I've only had one card fail on me in years and years of shooting, and that's why you just always have backup cards. And if you're doing something that important, have two cameras on the shoot. One advantage the R has in video mode is if you're recording externally, you can record 10-bit versus 8-bit on the 5D Mark IV. Both record 422. Now, if you are shooting externally, you can't shoot 4K external on the Mark IV, but you can shoot 4K external on the EOS R. And then one huge advantage on playback on the LCD is you can actually scrub through the video on the R and you can't on the Mark IV. I don't know why, it seems like such a simple feature that they could have built into the Mark IV and it's kind of obnoxious when you're going through a long video clip and you just have to wait for it to come up. On the R, you can just scrub right to it, check that you've got the shot and be on your way. And I think that is a huge plus. And if you're concerned about the weight of these two cameras, I'm using the R with the EF lens adapter and the weight difference between the R and that adapter plus the body only on the Mark IV is 0.2 pounds. So the EOS R is just a little bit lighter. Not a huge difference, but it's just enough to be noticeable. 
So if weight is a big concern for you, the EOS R definitely has the advantage there. Okay, so running through those specs, it does seem like the EOS R is definitely a better camera and a better deal at almost $1,000 cheaper than the 5D Mark IV. Now let's look at some comparison clips and see what the difference might actually be. So all of these clips were shot in C-Log and then graded in Premiere Pro. So the first thing I wanna take a look at is the digital image stabilizer in the EOS R. The Mark IV doesn't have any sort of image stabilizer and if you don't have an image stabilized lens, it's just gonna be the shake that you're getting handheld. So let's see what the EOS R Digital IS does. This is just a test of the image stabilization, digital image stabilizer in the EOS R. Um, one thing I did notice, not with the image stabilization, but this little flip LCD, when the mic's plugged in, you can't flip it around while it's flipped all the way out because it hits the mic cord. So that's just something to look out for. So if we take a look at this clip, you do see that it's it's still a tiny bit shaky, but it, overall it's a lot smoother than the following clip, which is shot with the Mark IV. We get every bit of bounce in that step, in the lens, in the camera. And one thing I did notice between these two clips is as soon as we come inside, the EOS R does seem to hold a lot more details in the shadows and the log profile overall seems to be quite a bit flatter than the log profile on the Mark IV, which I think translates into easier grading. I do notice a little bit less noise in the EOS R. So the EOS R does have two image stabilizer modes and one is a standard mode, the other is an advanced mode and they both give you a crop on whatever you're shooting. The extreme mode advanced, advanced, I forget what it's called, wait. So the standard mode crops in just a little bit, but the enhanced mode actually crops in quite a bit. So I have an example here of what to expect on each crop mode in 1080 and in 4K. This was the cityscape I shot at about 70 millimeters. I did notice the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R on full frame and with the 4K crop are pretty much the same framing. But you can see with the standard IS on, you get a little bit of a crop, not, not a whole lot, but a little bit. But if you switch to the enhanced IS, it does crop in quite a bit, which if you like shooting really wide can be a problem for you. This is an example of about 24 millimeters and the crop you can expect with each IS and in 4K with IS enabled as well. So you can see if you're shooting wide in 4K with IS enabled, you're gonna be losing quite a bit of your wide angle lens. If you like to shoot long, this is really gonna help you out. One other thing I did notice when going through some of the footage I shot with the image stabilizer on is if you bump the camera, it does give it this really weird wavy kind of warp stabilizer kind of feel. And of course that's not gonna be usable, but if you're bumping the camera, you probably wouldn't use that footage either way. So not a big deal. I just found it kind of interesting to watch. I will also add a download down below in the description to this little crop line template in case you wanna add it to your videos to see what that crop might look like with your particular lenses. The next comparison I did with these two cameras is a frame rate test in 1080 at 24 frames, in 4K at 24 frames, and 720 at 120 frames per second. I really didn't notice much difference between the two of these. The colors on both of these are very similar. They're not quite exactly the same, but they're very similar, easy to grade both of them. Once again, the biggest difference was that that C-Log profile was shooting quite a bit flatter on the Mark IV, giving me an even bigger dynamic range to grade with later. So the next goal was to go out and see how these two cameras compared in low light and high ISO. So both of these shots were shot at shutter speed uh, 1 50th at 2.8 and ISO 3200 which I know both cameras can go higher than that. I just think the footage starts to look softer and grainier after about 3200, so I like to keep it there. This first clip is from the 5D Mark IV. You can see it's a little bit shaky from being handheld, but overall, the colors, the contrast, everything's holding up. We're not getting really grainy. There's not a lot of noise here. I think it's holding up pretty well. And then this one is from the EOS R. It's a little bit stabler because the image stabilizer is on, 
And then you can definitely tell here where it's got a lot more detail in the shadows. So once again, that log profile is still shooting much flatter on the EOS R, giving you much more range to adjust that later on in post. So overall, I don't think you're losing any image quality going with the R over the 5D Mark IV. In fact, with video, I think you're gaining quality. And the price point for the R over the Mark IV is quite, quite a big difference. So for a cheaper camera and better quality, it's almost, it's pretty much a no brainer at that point. I've been shooting Canon for a long time, so I do have several EF lenses that I do, I've paid a lot of money for, I do like them, I like them a lot. So I've used the EOS R with the Canon adapter for the EF lenses. I do feel like it's a pretty solid adapter. It doesn't feel like there's any wiggle room in there. I get some adapters, I have some extension tubes that you put on there and you can just feel that the lens is a little wonky. With the Canon adapter and the Canon lenses, this is a very solid setup. I'm not noticing any quality loss or any loss in lens performance with that adapter. One thing to note with the digital IS is it only works in movie mode. It does not work in photo mode. Just keep that in mind. And I've also done a comparison video between these two cameras in photo mode. If you want, I'll link that up there. So check that out if you have a minute or if you're even interested in that. So. If you've used Canon cameras in the past, you kind of get used to the button layout, the menu layout, and with the EOS R, the physical button layout on this camera is quite a bit different than what I've been used to with the 5D series. The menu system in the R is very similar to the 5D series and I imagine the rest of the Canon lineup, so that didn't take any getting used to. But the buttons are a little different and it did take me a couple days to kind of get used to going back and forth from photo mode to video mode. The one thing I like about the Mark IV over that is it's just a switch on the back. That you switch, you're in photo mode, switch it back over, and you're in video mode. Using the R, I did miss some of the dials and the buttons that are on the top of the 5D Mark IV that allow me to change my ISO real quick, go between aperture priority, shutter priority, full manual, or my custom modes. But once you get the hang of changing those in the EOS R, it doesn't really take any longer or faster. It's definitely not faster, but it doesn't take that much longer than just switching a physical dial on the top of the camera. The R does have a touch bar on the back, which I tried to use and I didn't, I didn't really care for it too much. Maybe if I use it some more, I'll get, get the hang of using it a little better, a little easier in what it does and setting them up with custom features and all that but I did not find the touch bar to be super useful in the few days that I've had it and been out shooting with this camera. That's not to say it won't be in the future, but that's my opinion on it so far. So the button layout on the R is different. It just takes a little getting used to and then it's fine. There's, it's really not a problem. I did think that the EOS R would feel quite a bit smaller in my hands versus the 5D Mark IV. And with the big grip, it actually feels like a nice big solid camera. If you've ever picked up the M50, that you know how small and tiny that thing feels in your hand and it just doesn't feel right when you've got that tiny camera and a big lens hanging off the front of it. The EOS R does feel very solid. Overall, it's not much smaller than the Mark IV, but after a few days of using the R and then grabbing my 5D, I did notice that that body did feel quite a bit larger, even though they're not that much different. So what advantage would you have of grabbing the 5D Mark IV over the EOS R at this point? The only, one of the few things that I can see right now is just the longevity of the 5D series. You know that that's a solid camera. You know it's gonna work. You know it's a workhorse. It is going to be there and work every time you want it to work versus the R, which is a new technology for Canon. It's a new camera, it's a new series for them. I'm not sure on the longevity of this camera. I don't doubt that it's quality or that it's gonna last quite a while, but that's, that's kind of remained to be seen at this point. So overall, between the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R, I do think the EOS R is, is going to be a much better camera, and especially for the money. If you're gonna save $1,000 and buy the EOS R, get the same or better quality than the 5D Mark IV. Take that extra money and put it towards a really good lens or some other accessories, maybe an external recorder if you're gonna be doing a lot of video. Make that money work for you rather than just putting it all into one camera body. You can get a camera, a lens, external recorder, and you are good to go. 
So the last test that I wanna do with this camera is right here, like right here, right now. You are seeing me through the EOS R and I'm gonna switch back and forth between the EOS R and the 5D Mark IV and then you can see in this studio setup which one you think is better. So are you ready? Are you ready? Let's do this thing. EOS R, Mark IV, EOS R, Mark IV, EOS R, Mark IV. Okay, let's, let's just skip that. That's, you got the point. All right, so we're gonna finish the rest of this off on the EOS R. Okay, so right now, if I had to tell you which one to buy, I would definitely say buy the EOS R and then put that extra money into a good lens or maybe an external recorder if you're gonna be doing a lot of video or just some other accessories to get you going in your career. I think this is a phenomenal camera for the price. I think it's $2,200 or $2,300 right now. But if you wanna check it out, I've dropped some Amazon links down below in the description for both the 5D Mark IV and the EOS R. So do me a favor, check those out. Buy one if you like it or if you're in the market for it. And let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think of both cameras and why you would buy one over the other. So thanks a lot guys for sticking around. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down there. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of these. And I will see you guys next time.